ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Welcome back to episode 13 of Feeling Lucky, presented by Hops News. Um, we need to, this is a mental note that we need to take. Um, the music and the voice, I think we have to do separately on the soundboard. I'll we do have them both separately. Separate because like the, I feel like you can't hear the voice enough. When it plays, you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. We can do it however you want. It's your Producer world. Me. We just live in it, Lucky. <laughs> Producer B. Producer B. What? What? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, I'm that's Dash like you're supporting <laughs> over there. It's looking great, I buddy. I woke up like yeah. 10 minutes ago. What the fuck? Don't throw me with questions. Right. <laughs> don't, don't talk to me. Just trying to better the podcast. Um, we are on episode 13 of Feeling Lucky, um, presented by Hops News. I think I already said that. We will be going straight to an interview with Henry and Ayrton. Yep. Ayrton, right? Yep. I'm, I've been working on I've been working on his name all morning. Um, Ayrton, oh, it's an awesome interview. It is uh, for the upcoming Mobcraft Black is Beautiful collab. Right? Yeah. And they talk about a bunch of other initiatives bunch of other, bunch they're of other working shit. on. Super good interview. We always love having Henry on. Henry's the best. Um, and that's it. Forge new friendships with uh, Ayrton. So Ayrton's a great guy. So we're going to cut to that right now. Recording, recording episode 13. We are at one of my favorite places on the planet. This is Whoa, episode 13. One of right? our favorite places. Our, on the planet. Whatever. <laughs> already, <laughs> all already you, starting lucky. with the controversy. <laughs> um, one of our favorite places on the planet, Mobcraft Brewery. We have Henry and help me one more time with the, your name again. Ayrton. Ayrton. I wanted to say Atien, but it's yeah. Ayrton. I've gotten Atrium. I've gotten Artos. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be the first and won't be the last. Artos? Artos. Wow. But I, I like the way felt you... felt very Spartan. I yeah. love that it just gets Artos more exotic. Definitely. I yeah. appreciate exactly. that. Exactly. I was just like, now if I had the shape to match that. <laughs> <laughs> Artos definitely has a feel of like you're charging into battle or something. Yeah, charging like, straight into a keg out. of beer. Empty <laughs> <laughs> keg. Perfect, man. Well, so see, yeah. that's the leader I can get behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knows what he wants. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me pull up the questions here. But um, how have you guys been? Henry... We have to start with bottle share. Get a little bit of housework or er, yeah. um, clean up in. We were here when when were we here for the gr- for the release of the beer? August. Yeah, two months ago, roughly. Hey, maybe a little bit more over. than that. It was more than that. Was I have it? no sense of time. You guys. I three. Don't, maybe I, it was three. Twenty twenty. I think I would be better if it wasn't twenty twenty. But everything. Twenty twenty was. Pro- it's probably been my favorite year. Not gonna lie. That's but it's just been a lot. You can take that. It's back. been different. No, I'm not <laughs> gonna <laughs> take that. Back. We're gonna you cut this. Time. We're gonna cut this. No, no let, let the man explain so. New baby. Oh. My like home life is the best it's ever been. The brewery's been tough, but the team's been buckling down, and okay. we've came up with some really awesome ideas. And it's really showed the strength of like normal people would just throw in the towel and give up, but we've came up with a lot more stuff. So it's been hard. I'm so you ready made it work. Just humble brag. He's yeah. Yeah. got a family and all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's like a shitload of shit. And then you figure it out, right? <laughs> and you figure it out. You make do the best you can. And yeah. That's you know, my new life motto. A yeah. shitload of shit. <laughs> you just figure it out. Just <laughs> in a brownie tray. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you know what 2020 gave me is alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. A lot of alcoholism. So it helps with our podcast. Um, <laughs> but anyway, bottle share. What you're um, getting at. Yeah, so uh, we wrapped up the project. It took a while. Um, obviously getting a beer from when we released it at the tap room, which was right when it was packaged, yep. to getting it to... Eight different wholesalers across the U.S. and into like 160 different stores. Um, that took a little bit of time, so here we are, X months later, um, and then we finally get paid for all that beer, which means we can give away the money that we got paid for all that beer. But yeah, it took a lot of people doing a lot of stuff to get it out there, and it was thirteen thousand dollars worth of money. Fourteen. We we're rounding up here. It was 13, 13, eight. 13, Yeah, that's that's right. The first right. number was thirteen. The, so another follow-up question. Um, I have a cousin that's about two years old. Do you want him to write out your next check? 
your handwriting's terrible. Oh, yeah. Your handwriting's <laughs> absolutely terrible. I didn't yeah, know if you yeah. knew where I was, I was going with that, key. but... <laughs> I <laughs> think... Uh, yeah. I was like, underage? Handwriting. No, 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 no. It's, it's just, just the handwriting. Handwriting. Like, where'd you get a rich two-year-old? No, because right, right, I, yeah, I would love that next check. That'd no, be great. No, um, just... I meant strictly the handwriting. Your handwriting's absolutely atrocious. But yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't live off, my friend. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It was very poor penmanship. I was so excited to write it that I started writing the numbers instead of the letters when you're writing the check. Yeah. So like 13 had a three in it instead of a T. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. It's That's just fun. three teen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was, it was a fun initiative. I mean, it's to so be able pretty. to partner up with Chris and, and do a project like that was was really cool. I mean, we yeah. applied for the grants, so I'm waiting to see if we get one. But, yeah. um, it, it was awesome to be able to say, like, hey, we've got an asset, which is aged beer, that the market is kind of, it's slow. There's not too many people buying kegs, so we're mm -hmm. producing less beer. You know, can we turn all this beer that we're sitting on into something that we can distribute nationally to generate a good chunk of revenue, um, which could obviously be a good donation. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah, we were here for the release party and it feels like that was forever ago but 14 13,800 is the final number and that's so crazy so I we think just there had was to, 30 at the end of that 800 then there was <sighs> and 39 cents or just hear me out. Okay, so let's, maybe, let's just round it up to fourteen guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen, nine 13 cents. nineteen. Cents. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want to go over. You know, up to would of be course. how I would describe them. Yep. <laughs> so we're here now to talk about the Black is Beautiful collab. Yeah, and uh, blogger and listen too. And what? Blogger and listen. Blogger and listen. So that was yep. going to be kind of like on. a two-part initiative. Yeah. Um, blogger and listen will exist forever, and the Black is Beautiful we're going to brew now, and then. Hopefully, have a barrel aged version as well uh, at some point in the time it takes for beer to age inside of a barrel. Yeah, but in your minds forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could cellar it for a little bit, and then we'll brew it again, and you know, yeah. all that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we had Marcus on um, the Hoppy Hour uh, back. I want. I have the. I have the date here, June fourth. And so at the time, he was. They had 290 breweries that had signed up. Wow. Last time I checked, it's 1,177. I think it's 1,600 now. 1,600? Yeah. Dude, I mean, that's so crazy. I <laughs> Hockey stick. I yeah. yeah. It's, it's <laughs> that's awesome. It's absolutely insane. So just tell me a little bit about uh, both of you guys. Um, what's it like to be a part of that awesome, awesome movement? Big question. Man. Um, Talk about it from the craft beer perspective. Like, what does that say to you about well, the craft do, beer industry? So, do you want to learn how me and Ayrton got hooked up? And yeah. yeah. Please, how please. I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, I'm that's sorry. really what we Where want to know. Want to I'm so this sorry. Whole entire I'm so thing. sorry. Ayrton, we also, <laughs> I mean, we want to know about um, MKE Black, and we want to know all about um, what you guys do over there. So, we'll... Yeah. I guess ask you to introduce yourself first because yeah. I did a poor job. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. No problem. I also forgot the intro like music, so he's really not. Where the horse, where horse cart? Is. Who knows? Yeah, you know? we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> yeah, but uh, name's Ayrton Bryan, and so I'm the strategic partnerships coordinator for MKE Black. And so, as an organization, our job is to uh, amplify the voices and promote the success of Black-owned businesses in the greater Milwaukee area. And we have a two-part strategy to that. Really, one, just share the beautiful businesses that are on our uh, site and around the area. We keep learning about more each and every day. And then also just share that with people that look like everyone uh, around yeah. communities so that we have uh, 594,000 strong uh, supporting those businesses. That's crazy. That's, crazy. That's, That's awesome. Really so one, one thing, Ayrton, tell me, when we were first talking about how MKE Black came to be, like the epiphany that you had and put in like businesses not being online, like just give that yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, started with two wonderful uh, dudes that I've gotten the opportunity to know. So Paul Wellington and Rick Banks, uh, two Milwaukee natives, came together and said, why is it so hard finding black owned businesses? And so they uh, came together, put their ideas in a hat and really just developed this directory, developed this system where you could find some of those black owned businesses. And then um, and I joined and reached out after the uh, the happenings of this summer in May, the unfortunate loss of life, um, George Floyd, and just connected with Paul and said, I 
I know it's my time that I can do something more to help out. So one of the things we wanted to do is really reach out to businesses to not assume that we knew what they wanted, but have some conversations, get an understanding and talk in there. And in searching for them, what we found was there was this uh, sort of gap in their sharing of their story in terms of a digital presence and online presence. And so what, some of what we're doing now is really focusing on being able to support that and find ways to connect them to that because uh, like it or not, the world of online is how you connect so much. It's uh, definitely in 2020 how we've found ways to connect and so uh, helping to support some of those uh, creations and really sharing their story, their passion and what they do has been a uh, fun journey and experience. And so. Uh, yeah, in efforts of that uh, on the path, fortunately got reached out to Henry by Mobcraft. He didn't have to call, so I didn't get an Artos, but uh, <laughs> he was uh, just reached out and said, hey, I have some ideas, would love if you'd come by Mobcraft. And then I was just like, this is when service pays off. I was yeah. just like, because I had been a frequenter of Mobcraft, <laughs> yeah, Scout right. Fest in 2019. <laughs> I was like, that was my like cap. I was like, I'm going to hide in one of those... Uh, <laughs> those bright beer tanks and just live here. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, awesome. Uh, we feel the same way whenever we come to Mobcraft. Yeah. So. I think there are four of them, so I mean, arguably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Henry, grab another round. Do you have any plants later than those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, what time are you locking the doors? Just so we know. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll give you the alarm code. So, so Ericsson, perfect. I got a question for you. Do you think this whole um, COVID thing helped jumpstart uh, a lot of that online presence for a lot of businesses? And I would say it's a mixed bag, and so uh, in some senses, uh, you double down on what you know, and so being able to connect with some of that, like, hey, we're posting on our Facebook or calling, um, being able to support there, but then also it was a pause in people's steps in their business plans. It was an interruption in terms of their resources, and so in some senses it was a disruption just because so many of these, we think of business owners, but we often don't think of the mothers or fathers they are. The, right. uh, family, the parents, and so um, with so many things going on in life, it could have been a disruption as well, which is why we saw, uh, particularly at MK Black, that we wanted to figure out ways to sort of smooth some of those humps and be able to connect them to the resources that they really needed, um, and do it in a way that each business owner is so different, so unique, and so beautiful in their own way, and just uh, find ways to support and uh, promote and share their story. Yeah, absolutely. That's, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that, I mean, nice. that changs. We're clearly roommates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, so, so that's where, where we got connected. And after George Floyd was murdered, we looked like every business was like freaking out to make a statement on the internet. Like, right. Make a statement. Like everybody, yeah, you say something. But we knew that we wanted to, yes, rapidly say something, but also get our asses in gear to do something because enough is enough. You know, you can only have so much bullshit before you have to try and, you know, make a change. Because everybody can, even if it's in a small way or a big way. So we, you know, our next, like, director's meeting that we had with all the, the you know, directors of our company got together and just said, what are we, what do we want to invest in and what do we want to put time into? And the first one was working with more black-owned businesses because we'd been taking all of our events online, we'd been doing everything on Zooms, and we'd been doing lots of pairings. So uh, there was an article in Journal Sentinel or something like that on MKE Black, and it was like, wow, this exists, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Here's a great way for me to find more black-owned businesses we might be able to do pairings with. Yep. So we did like a you know, salsa and beer pairing with that salsa lady, and we did a beer and bougie berries pairing with bougie berries, <laughs> and you know, just in a, in a very small way, just started to work with more businesses that we had never interacted with in the past. And then um, kind of simultaneously, I wanted to launch an uh, initiative that would be more of a, a way for people to, to learn more of, you know, learn, get more perspective and just, you know, learn how there are so many different, like, silos and ecosystems out there that all face, like, systemic racism. So I knew I am not an expert in systemic racism. I do not know how to solve it. And if I said anything, it would probably be phony because I, you know, I'm a white dude with a beard <laughs> who runs a brewery and I, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be authentic with this. Mm -hmm. um, so I reached out to the Brewers Association. They have a diversity ambassador that has some really cool resources and I listened to a few of her talks. And then um, 
you know, reached out to Ayrton, and I didn't just like reach out. I linked, LinkedIn stalked the shit out of you. I had to figure out like, one, who's this guy? Two, how am I getting a hold of it? Just, <laughs> just want to clarify. You said you linked LinkedIn stalked the shit out of him. Yes. Okay. I yeah. Did and you guys see what I heard? LinkedIn <laughs> stalked. Yeah. I, I, I heard at first, I heard licked and stalked. I was like, oh, yeah. It was a really you weird guys. couple of weeks over at Black MKE. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Your guys' relationship goes a little you. further than I thought. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Yeah. laughs> don't like to lick and tell. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Well, so, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he came over to the brewery. You know, we had a beer. Um, just our first conversation, uh, I, I cried because I was just just to see your passion into, you know, MKE Black and what you've done with the organization. And then just to be able to sit down and have such a great conversation that just felt so good and have so much energy to, to launch something that would, you know, have a small bit of change as much as we could do. Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know, hey, Mobcraft has a following. Um, we can be a microphone. And if we can work with people who, you know, have experienced systemic racism in different segments, you know, we can, we can get that story out there and we can get people to listen to it and if we can all interact over some loggers, that's great. So we launched Logger and Listen. Yep. Um, the first segment we did on October 6th, um, the next one's gonna be on November 11th, and we're gonna focus November on- November 10th. November 10th, dang it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can't get that's why we're right. a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the URL is bit.ly slash logger and listen. Or you Google logger and listen, and it pops up. That's the good awesome. thing about Google. Very, very cool. <clears throat> so yeah, the first one was on, um, the bars and breweries in the Milwaukee area. And then the next segment, we're gonna be working with um, startup financing, and we've got a couple of venture capitalists that are on board. Um, so it's just so cool that it's like this viral effect. Yeah. It's a bad year to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you, meet a, you meet a couple people, and then they know a couple people and share the same passion as you do. And all of a sudden, you're talking with people who run venture capital firms. Mm -hmm. You're talking with people who run bars. You're talking with like the first, potentially first black-owned brewery in Milwaukee because there aren't mm -hmm. black-owned breweries in Wisconsin. Yeah. How fucked up is that? It's crazy. Another thing we came up with, like, there are no beer gardens mm -hmm. in, in black neighborhoods. There's just so much stuff that makes yeah. no freaking sense at all. That's actually like really shocking to me because I feel like living in Milwaukee and just Wisconsin in general, like you should be able to throw a stone and there should be a beer garden, <laughs> like by law. Yeah. By <laughs> law. <laughs> and it, that's why our city is so fucked. Yeah. Our first homework, and here's, this is a shout out to Milwaukee Parks Department. Our first homework was follow up with some places you like mm -hmm. and ask them what they're doing to make it a more diverse experience for people to come and for a business perspective. And I got radio silence from the parks department when I asked, why are there no beer gardens in black, on, in black neighborhoods? So I've got to try harder on that one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. like, and uh, I'd say one of the things that we're really excited about with Logger and Listen is just the fact that it's an opportunity for people to just share perspective, share ideas, and have an understanding that maybe some of what I'm holding or some of what I see in my day-to-day -day isn't the reality that other people are facing. And so just having that perspective and with the knowledge that us at MK Black, we're not experts either, which is why we want to bring people together to talk. Um, I'd say that probably there's not an expert on uh, system, <laughs> which is why it's, uh, just, and if they are, there they was. should solve it. I was going to say. Um, yeah. so please try to <laughs> make it clear. Uh, but um, just having this idea of by conversation, we can all just take away something, leave a little bit better, and do a little bit more each and every day. And so yeah. it's um, it's really been a wonderful process. And I'll like randomly text Henry, like, I thought of this topic. And it was like, <laughs> it's five months down the road. I need to be people that do anything with that first. Yeah, so it, uh, hopeful. <laughs> that's awesome. And so then that is where the Black is Beautiful came in. Obviously, that's. Um, no, not even. These are just like. No. Well, I, I don't remember. See, I have this short term memory thing. Where okay. It's like, yeah. Two <laughs> very distinct ideas. It was like Lager and Lesson, and then like on a similarly awesome mountain peak. Yep. Here's Black and Beautiful. Okay. So nice. we were, we were able to pull it together in a, in a really fun, interactive way. Like most breweries that are not Mobcraft just make beer. If you're Mobcraft, you make beer and you want the whole world to make beer with you. Yeah, right. So um, with Ayrton's help, we got, what do you think? There were probably 40, 45 people that came through the day? Absolutely. Well, maybe it's not that many. Maybe 30 people. Whatever. Yeah. Somewhere in there. They that 30 to 45 person range. You know, we threw, we threw a brew day. We're like, we're going to brew Black is Beautiful, but instead of just following the recipe, 
we're going to crowdsource the recipe. So with both of our networks, we said, submit ideas for beers. Yeah. And then we had a final vote, and we voted on the beer that won. And this beer is uh, Cola Nut, Yams, Madagascar Vanilla, and oh Jamaican God. Fair Trade Coffee. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so like, let's, let's take the Black is Beautiful recipe, and let's mobcraft it yeah. and crowdsource the concept for it. Of course. So we got connected to um, David, who's the owner of Jamaican Fair Trade Coffee. We're yep. using his coffee in it. Um, I have no clue where we're going to find cola nuts because I didn't even know that there was <laughs> such a thing until the recipe came up, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, I still haven't found them on Google. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then just to further expand upon that an idea, those 30 to 40 people were all like connected in ways to black owned businesses. Many of them were the owners. Yep. We asked them to bring their friends. Uh, we talked around craft beer. And I think one of my favorite things is um, just in terms, I mean, of really talking around uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion around the beer industry. I mean, just that's something that needs to be talked about. I mean, For sure. there's not often. Um, I remember one time I walked into a brewery and saw like four black people, and I was like, this is Mecca. Like, I was just, like, this is, I'm home. It's the peak. Yeah, oh exactly. my God. This it's, is wild. It's, it's so sad and disgusting and scary. Like, that's probably more black people that have ever been in this brewery at one time ever. Yeah. And why, why is that? You know, Beer, like, there's plenty of black people that like beer. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a very sad and embarrassing thing for me to look at, like, the, the past six years of running Mobcraft. Like, this has never been an initiative of mine. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Did I think that I don't want to advertise to the different community? No. That's just how it happened. But yeah. this is like when shit is hitting the fan, we got to do something about it. For and, sure. you know, hopefully we can, you know, turn on some lights for some more people to just ding. Yeah. And so one of the things that we're intentionally doing with our uh, Black is Beautiful is we're focused on communicating it to sharing it with those communities. So connecting into uh, black neighborhoods, mm -hmm. black owned businesses, and really sharing that. Like we want this to be something that if you're interested, you can share, be part of the story and really uh, share what its mission is because you're to your point it's already something global and so mm -hmm. just localizing some of that energy is what we really wanted to do very nice yeah there's just so many connections like that did you talk to marcellus a little bit on that brew day i did not have he was the one that had the dreads that were just oh, like yes. short dreads that were like uh up a little bit yeah so he i mean amazing guy he works with um, people with disabilities and helps find jobs so like i was like hey we're hiring people you know, so we've been working together over the past little bit to try and find somebody to fill in some of our production jobs and help like offload on the canning line. And yeah. it's just so weird how you you put yourself in in a silo and you don't venture out of it. And that is the majority of most people in our society, right? Yep. You got you, you've got your circle, and you might have a new person who comes and goes because they have um, some direct correlation to the types of people that you would interact with. But I mean, I encourage the hell out of everybody to just in any way you can, just leave that silo and go somewhere else that is completely foreign because there's so much out there that <laughs> that you can build upon and so many great relationships and partnerships you can start just by trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. One thousand percent. And when we had um, when we had Marcus on um, way back when, um, that was something that he really talked about. He wanted to get um, the African American community more involved in beer. And we have a guy at Hops News, his name is uh, Brother Lee Love, or that's what he goes by, his Brother Lee Love. Um, and he's somebody that I'd kind of like to put you guys in contact with. He's an awesome guy. Um, he does all of the, what does he do, all of the can art for um, Appalachian Brewery, Appalachian Brewery, which is like where Jay Brew is where we're headquartered, but like it's it's so crazy, like all of the stuff he did, something with uh, whoops, sorry about that, I don't know what that was, um, but he did some stuff with uh, Marcus as far as the Black is Beautiful goes, and like it's just awesome. I love that you guys are doing it. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the website? So like you talked about like it's uh, for Black businesses. Um, how do you get onto the website if you're a yeah. African American business owner? Yeah. Do you reach out to them or do they reach Absolutely. out to you or something so like that? So okay. I'd say it's a mix of the two. And so some's just like every few months doing a round of research, figuring out, okay, is there anyone we've missed? Anyone that says it's black owned businesses that they're here and we're able to add them. But then if we do miss something, you can uh, email contact 
at mkblack.org and submit your information and so get added there. And really the goal is for it to be a directory. It's divided, it's got uh, wellness and beauty, it's got uh, restaurant spaces, it has mental health services. And so it's just meant to be some of that information of if I want to support black owned businesses yep. or to eventually we're at a point where do I want to support businesses I like, yeah. um, where it's just, um, you can find that network, you can see it on a map and it's going through constant iterations, adding features and really it's meant to be that consumer facing entity. And so we want it to be accessible in the sense that a wide swath of businesses can get on it and a wide swath of consumers can use it to nice. really uh, keep informed. Very, very cool. So I was on the website a couple days ago checking it out. Um, I saw that you guys do events. So tell us a little bit about what the events are, what the goals are of, and kind of how you're doing them right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of our events on September 24th, we did a um, voter registration event. So uh, MK Black presents the Voter Block Party, and it was actually a company brewing. Uh, so definitely, uh, <laughs> I lean a little towards the brewery side of things, so <laughs> happy to nudge that way when we're with the execs uh, making decisions. But it's what we want to do is to really activate the community, but also activate businesses' abilities to connect. I think uh, one thing, just looking at a model that Mobcraft uses, is that importance of connection and reaching out and realizing we're better together. Um, the idea of this cooperative economics is really something that we want to promote and share and be like, we traditionally have looked at methods of, hey, here's, here's our section that we get to fight over or argue for, while now, with this new age, and one of the things I would say I've noticed just in recent years is people are figuring out how to collaborate, how to connect, and just amplify that. And really at MKE Black, we see ourselves as being able to be a conduit of that in terms of, we know we're not gonna be able to help you with your every need that comes up, but we wanna be able to connect you to who can help you. And so really events centered around connection. So presenting businesses to consumers, um, presenting businesses to other businesses if they need things like financial help, if they need to talk around legal, just being able to connect them um, in that sort of space so that we can get better together. And really, I would say, uh, we hit our goal this year for 5,000 downloads and just uh, <laughs> the ultimate goals, like I said, population in Milwaukee. So, right. yeah, let, let your kids know about it too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next download. <laughs> That's awesome. So, did, um, I was looking at it also, and there was uh, COVID 19 grants that you guys were giving out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is that something that um, the proceeds of Black is Beautiful is going towards, or am I? wrong for assuming yeah. that or no problem so absolutely so um, again just after this summer period we saw an influx of donations towards yep. MK Black and so one of the things that I think again the two original founders Paul and Rick really were committed to is being that resource of giving it back and so those donations came in we kept some for operational costs and then instantly focused on being able to help support businesses through some of this and with the monies that's raised from Black is Beautiful, we do want to funnel that, again, right back into figuring out ways to help businesses and um, support them uh, by identifying initiatives and really just become that premier, uh, call it a central hub in terms of connecting uh, businesses to who they need. And I think an important part of that is while we, we're promoting Black-owned businesses, that's who we're sharing on the website, something we're finding is that Helping doesn't have a face, it doesn't have a skin color, which is, I think, the beautiful thing about what we're working towards is that it doesn't come from somebody that looks like this. It doesn't come from somebody that grew up like this. It comes from people being willing to admit, I might have some bias, I might be wrong about some things, let's talk about it. And uh, one of the cool ways to talk about it is over a beer, a lot, <laughs> uh, if you will, and just really being able to share and connect and I've, uh, but some wonderful help has been had from uh, people that look a lot of different ways in the mirror and uh, yeah, have different lighting. So yeah. it's a pretty cool experience. Very cool. Ayrton, I just love that your whole entire concept is organized to eventually no longer be needed. Yeah. How cool would that be? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Just right. apparate like, <laughs> like something that apparates. I didn't have a good, I had no end to that. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we're going to come back to Mobcraft for a little bit. Um, 
I know we had you on the first episode, but we do have new listeners and um, new members of the Hobbs News family. And I put out the question whether or if anybody had any questions for you, because you're mentioned, just so you know, you're mentioned all the time on Hoppy Hours and stuff. <laughs> I send out your beer to pretty much, I mean, in every box that I send out in our beer exchanges, um, I send out at least one thing from Mobcraft, if not more. Um, so one of the listeners or one of the members of the Hops News family wants to know where all of the awesome names and where uh, the can art comes from. Yeah. So, um, so I'll answer the can art question first because yeah. <laughs> that's the longest story. Uh, way back in the day when Henry and Andrew went to college, we started this brewery out of our like first college houses and we launched the concept in a little business incubator like senior year. The university was giving us like access to faculty to bounce ideas off of. We were homebrewing a bunch of beer, and we got connected with a graphic designer. And that graphic designer taught a class. I went to that class and said, here's a bunch of homebrew names for beers. Do you guys want to design images? So a class project, they designed beer labels for Mobcraft. And then the ones that were the best, we were like, hey, you guys want to do some freelance work if we ever get this brewery off the ground? Yep. So Samantha Mack was the winner of that class group. and. <laughs> She did freelance stuff for us from 2012 to 2015 and then jumped on full-time in 2015, and she designs everything that comes out of this brewery. It's awesome. And she's super talented, and we should pay her more money. <laughs> 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 um, and then the names for our beers. Um, the names that are really bad are the ones that we come up with, <laughs> like Mobcraft IPA <laughs> and <laughs> MC Amber. But that's really funny. Yeah. Right. But, you know, MC Amber is good. I like it's that It's still, like, you know, it's... it's yeah, it's a pretty, pretty normal name. But um, So we're a crowdsourced brewery. The funnest part about the beers we make are that we let the crowd come up with a new beer every month. Um, in COVID times, we've changed that to every other month because, you know, just don't need as much beer. Yeah. And we had a lot left in the cooler from not being able to sell it. Um, so users uh, on our website at mobcraftbeer.com submit ideas for beer names and like basic recipes. They're not necessarily a full grain bill and hop regimen. They might just be a couple flavors that you want to see in a beer. The beer that actually won this month, the guy didn't even submit a style, like at all. We're like, is this a stout? Is this cream ale? Is this just a dip? Who knows? <laughs> you know, it's like Scotty G's pie and ice cream, something. So we just got to yeah. come up with it. Right. So once those ideas are submitted, you know, they're always fun names. Um, Rabbit's Bounty, Carrot Cake Ale, um, a Hopalypse Hazy IPA, like the dinosaurs and meteorites of hops raining down and everybody on the label. Yep. Um, so all those crowdsource names are always really fun because beer is fun and yeah. coming up with this stupid name is fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're all great, but they're all like, yeah, cool. This is, you know, a great name for a, for a one-off beer. Fruity Hopples. Like, we just chucked, like, boxes and boxes of Fruity Pebbles into the mash tun to make a... Yeah. There's like, there's <laughs> no so IP many with fruity pebbles. There's so many cereal beers that are coming out. I'm glad you guys are hopping on the trend because I think that you're going to do it really well. This but trend there's has been so here for many. so long. Yeah. Like Count Chocula. <laughs> Count Chocula, That yep. came out in like 2014. Yep. We, uh, uh, one of our guests um, is Pontoon Brewing and they do the Smiggles. Oh. The Smiggles, um, that's like the tricks there. I love their can art. It's like the. He's like a vampire or something, isn't it? Or he's some crazy... But yeah, no, there's um, it's a lot of stuff. I'm glad you guys are jumping on that trend. I'm trying to figure out the time. Do you guys have any more questions? Because I think we're way over. I thought it was um, game time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out... This is in seconds, and I'm an accountant, but I'm not good at that mental Eight. math. <laughs> Eight. Gotcha. Well, any more this? questions from you guys before we wrap up? I might have one or two more. But no, if you have a couple more, just take them away. Yeah, go ahead. So one more question from one of our listeners um, was just a random, random question. Um, do you guys prefer Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon? No opinion. You don't have to have an opinion. I absolutely have an opinion. Okay, <laughs> please. Yeah. Right. Please go. Yeah. Please go. Yeah. I think uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, for it, it was that right amount of edge where I was like, yep. I'm tough because I carry around a deck of cards. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yu-Gi-Oh was way more edgy than yeah. it should have been. Yeah, I was about to be like, oh, 18 layers of eyeliner, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, gosh. I also have an opinion. Okay, go All for right. it. This dates back to fourth grade. Yep. Um, I got in trouble. Uh, for this stuff because I was buying and selling Pokemon cards at school in fourth grade That's and awesome. I um, got a lot of lunch money 
Okay, I made 400 bucks selling Jeez. Pokemon cards in fourth grade. Oh my god. <laughs> IRS, so check, those, up, check yeah. those tax records. Yeah, right? Right? Oh, yeah. All yeah. in an investment account? I was going to say, my <laughs> lord. He's a businessman in fourth grade. Yeah, yeah, we know this whole brewery was founded on it. And no. It's you can't knock the hustle. <laughs> It's amazing. Um, a personal question for me is for Henry, um, who do I have to suck to get on that reggae playlist that you oh, and Chris have? Yeah. I heard about that and I was kind of offended that you didn't invite me because I yeah, love reggae. Um, the, the Yaka Yaka Yo playlist. Um, I finally <laughs> have asked Google to play it so many times yeah. that they don't play Yakety Yak anymore. Nice. Like, that was the worst. Hey, Google, play Yaka Yaka Yo playlist. We're playing Yakety Yak, Yakety Yak, don't go. Like, for months and now it finally is like playing yaka yaka yo on spotify <laughs> um so what do you have to do yeah Not what do i have to mean do? it's it's, oh, it's on the internet oh, you can okay, do anything yeah. with it okay. it's open <laughs> chris said chris said you guys had like some kind of playlist or some kind we do of it's the yaka and... yaka yo playlist okay it's chris me and my brother-in-law we put nice. reggae music on it i take it off if it's not good nice Beautiful. I, have I will be looking it up. Off. I will be looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I've been a, a reggae fan since forever. My uncle in in Colorado, like, he had a, like a Bob Marley CD in his yeah. in his car, and so I threw that on. Always loved Bob. And then it's probably like twenty. About the time we opened the brewery, like somebody was like, "Have you ever heard Gregory Isaacs?" It's like no. It's like whoa, there's more reggae than Bob Marley. <laughs> that just opened this can of worms that has not ended in years. And you know, if there's reggae music, I'm down. Um, the couple times that I've been like really wasted in the brewery, well after yeah. hours, oh, yeah. like the, that playlist is just still on. But I've just like half turned off the speakers, and somebody comes in to open the next day, and I'm like, wow, Henry was here. <laughs> it was just blaring. So, That's so funny. Yeah. All right, I think we're def we're definitely over on time. Um, yeah. So I appreciate you guys coming on. Please plug everything um, before we ho uh, hop off. Henry, we'll start with you. Um, first thing, the Logger and Listen series. Yes. Bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Logger and Listen. And spelt out, not an ampersand. I don't even know if you can put that in a website, but <laughs> bit.ly slash Logger and Listen. Um, or if you can't figure that out, you can Google Mobcraft Logger and Listen. Um, we will be hosting it once a month, so no matter when you're listening to this podcast, you will be able to follow that link and RSVP. Um, mobcraftbeer.com is our website. If you want to submit an idea for a beer, there's a submit tab right about the top. Uh, we take submissions and we do those once every two months now. So submit stuff. Don't Hops pee. News. Hops News definitely uh, submitted one. I don't think we've heard back on it yet. Just saying. Oh, Just throwing that yeah. out there. I mean, it's <laughs> it's real like brewery dickish oh, yeah. because you know it's kind of like well when we get to the recipe and it fits. <laughs> if you're submitting an eggnog beer right now for the December vote, oh, just yeah. just don't, man. It's not <laughs> yeah. gonna come out till March. We don't want an eggnog beer in March. Yeah. Um. So there's that. And then if you wanna, if you're in the Milwaukee area or elsewhere, we can ship beer to like seven states, New York, Florida, DC, Illinois, Illinois, North Carolina, Alaska, Nebraska. Um, we're doing some advent calendars this year, 24 beers, that was gonna be one fun. beer per day. That's awesome. Um, we got four, no, yeah, four barrel aged beers, six core beers, eight seasonals and eight limited release beers. Um, so that's up on the website. You can go to mobcraftbeer.com slash support. Those are all the ways you can continue to keep us open during the shutdown. Because we've been losing $19,000 a week. <laughs> Not anymore. That, the first, like, four months of the pandemic, yeah. Don't show that sucks. Anyway, on a more positive <laughs> note, <laughs> we will make it through. But it's uh, definitely due to everybody out there continuing right. to help us and keep us open. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. All right, our turn. So uh, again, logger and listen. Can't say how much we uh, enjoy that. Uh, go to mkeblack.org if you want to learn more, see some different businesses that you can figure out how to support, how close they are, how far they are, and uh, just bounce around. There's some really wonderful businesses out there, uh, some amazing owners that have really cool stories. So uh, check that out. And then also on D 
December the 6th, that'll be a Monday, uh, MKE Black and one of our partners, Nexi, basically, it took the idea of a crowdfunded stock market, basically, and so uh, people in the neighborhood can come together and yeah. uh, help fund a business to come to life, and so they'll be uh, presenting. They heard about Milwaukee and got connected with MKE Black and are excited to get here, so we'll be nice. sharing a little bit more about how businesses, hopefully some breweries out there, can uh, apply and uh, get some funding to get started <laughs> very cool man well thank you guys again so much we appreciate it i got one more thing please um our black is beautiful is going to get released on 11 20 november awesome. 20th okay so we, just throwing that out there i believe are we still invited <laughs> sure <All right. laughs> way to put him on the spot yeah, yeah. Jesus. i'm just gonna say they could have waited i just said it publicly that's when we're releasing it <laughs> anybody could go Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much. Um, we'll hop over to segments now. Not we're back. I guess this is um, this is going to be after the interview with Mobcraft. Shout out to Henry and Arton. Ayrton. Ayrton. Why, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so bad at that name. So my favorite part about you being bad at it is it's a podcast. So we could literally just cut this and no, like restart it with you not, not screwing it up. No, we're not going to do that. Um, but we're committed be disingenuous. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be disingenuous. <laughs> be wasting tape. Wasting tape on the fucking computer that has unlimited fucking RAM. So... Um, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> what computer has unlimited RAM and also RAM's not even where that, never mind. Apparently, oh, apparently, apparently Lucky's 2015 <laughs> refurbished MacBook Pro has a limited RAM. I have a floppy disk, I have a floppy disk <laughs> in my fucking MacBook. Um, <laughs> fuck off, dude. We're back. Relax, this is the first nice thing. Let them have this, okay? <laughs> Beef? <laughs> yeah, I can barely open GarageBand, but okay. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Um, I think that might be user error because we are, I think we can all agree, hungover as This is, so this is the, I'm not hungover yet. I'm still drunk. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, but um, you guys could be hungover. So it was, let's, do you want to sing happy birthday to JJ or no? It's not his birthday. It's a Monday. But that's what we were celebrating. We were? I just want them to sing to me. <laughs> just want, I just want to feel loved. <laughs> so, uh, we don't have to. Not. We don't have to sing. Can we sing it in rounds? What do you? What? One person stars and the next person chimes in. Never mind. Um, All right, I'm asking too much of these guys. Yeah. No, <laughs> I hardly know the words to "Happy Birthday." <laughs> like, I don't know. In your I state, know. I'd be amazed if you made it halfway through. <laughs> um, what are we drinking? On? So we are. We're back. We're back. Um, shout what out are we to shout out to um, Ayrton and uh, Henry. You got it right. Right, right off the cusp. I'm proud of you. I always knew it. It was a joke. No, it was a joke. It was a joke. Um, if there was a what is that thing called? The thing that goes back and forth. Um, did pendulum. you hear that little tick? Say it again. <clears throat> pendulum. No. Oh. Uh, I'm so confused where this is going. I the, really no, no, no. This thing on here, I just clicked it off. I don't know if they can hear that, but it was oh. going like well, whatever. Um, shout out Ayrton and Henry. Uh, it was a super. It was so much fun. Um, we are going to be doing a lot with Mobcraft coming up, as long as they don't listen to this part of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but their their interview was fucking awesome. Um, so they have a Black is Beautiful coming up. Um, and I'm super excited. Uh, what are we drinking? That that was my first question. All right, well, coffee. Coffee. yeah, we got a wide <laughs> variety <laughs> of drinks around on the table. Um, so a little backstory. I got this. Everybody lemon has three lime. drinks in front of them right now. Yeah. So. I got this lemon lime fruit ale. <laughs> fruit ale. <laughs> it's more by, like a sour to me. I don't know. Brewed by Gatorade. <laughs> 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 Sounds exotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Out of Chicago, Illinois. Nice. Classic. Uh, is, That's a classic. Yeah, are they actually out of Chicago? I didn't know that. Colorado. But it's um it's distributed out of Colorado. It is know, it is fashion. the morning after our house party. Uh we Halloween decided, party. Yeah, Halloween right. party. We decided to wake up, record this, and so 
We all got something well, to rehydrate. We, I did not wake something, up. Something. Yes. We did not decide this. Lucky decided this. <laughs> yeah, lucky, lucky. Lucky woke us up at 9 a.m. I was like, I haven't slept yet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's record. I haven't slept yet. We got to shoot a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Borderline delirious. Yeah. I hate you both, but like that's the truth. I don't know. I don't know. I don't so know. Right under the that's bus. That's what we did there. Um, yeah. So we are shooting this um, right. Uh, we're shooting this on a Saturday. Episode's coming out on Tuesday. So this is the. I feel like this is the first time because the last episode we did was one with uh, Whiskey J, which was amazing. It was a super fun episode, but we didn't get to do like any clean up or whatever like we didn't we didn't get to do any like no walkie topics no house, yeah. housekeeping we didn't get to do any of that so this is um this is going to be after the mobcraft interview for the fucking fifth time i don't know how many times i'm going to say that um but yeah we're together we are <laughs> <laughs> what are we <laughs> I don't know. Someone else, We're someone here. else talk. I don't know. I yeah. I like. I haven't slept all night. But so then, let's just move into some housekeeping items. What do we got sports wise? What's going sports on? Sports wise, the biggest thing is by far the Wisconsin Badgers. What's his name? Producer B. Graham Mertz. Graham Mertz. That's why we keep you around, producer B. He Beef. tested yeah. positive for COVID and has to isolate, or he has to quarantine for twenty one days. Per Big Ten rules, right? That's not after us. setting. Records like dude put up numbers. Graham Mertz he tested positive for COVID, and the Big Ten requires twenty one days of twenty one days of quarantine. I don't know anything about COVID, but twenty one days. Is I know. Excessive. I know one of our uh, hosts faked having it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Oh, I can't smell. Fuck you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's just not. Uh, well, I did hear that there's like the big per Big Ten rules. If the university case like percentage is like so high, they won't let the team play regardless of if the players do or do not have it. And but so that, I heard that just, like that's just, they're close as a university to that line as well. I would rather them hit that line than just have our fucking. Ama- the best quarterback Wisconsin has ever had, ever, the biggest recruit that we've ever had. Um, who was that? It's a magical phone thing on. called the phone. Yeah. Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best recruit Wisconsin's ever had, test positive, and then he's not going to play for three weeks, and we're going to get trampled by fucking some nobody. When we could have had grammar, it's just putting up fucking digits. Like, it sucks. I don't know. That's really, in sports, that's all I wanted to talk about. There was a World Series that mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> I didn't Dodgers actually won. realize the it Dodgers happened won. until it was over. I like saw like the banners, no, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, shit, okay. Yeah. Tommy Lasorda isn't dead. That's really my only takeaway. Right? That's what I'm talking about. The Dodgers owner? Yeah, sure. Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> 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 Beef with the fact checks over there. Uh, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we looked it up. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally. not going to suck you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Hopkins. It's like this is weird rotating through drinks. I'm just slowly taking a sip of each. This is I our just, first ever hungover edition of Feeling Lucky. This isn't. Have. No, yeah, it is the first hung. We've done drunk editions of Feeling Lucky. Yeah, we've done that's plenty like of edition. those. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's most. Most editions have been drunk. Um. That's. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about as far as Milwaukee goes? As far as any of that shit, how do you guys feel about Halloween? How do you think that was? Or you mean the lack of Halloween? Or are yeah, you about so Halloween the, party? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, we had a house party. It was good. We had fun. fun. The uh, the house is still in that weird state where everything is like covered in a layer of cheap beer, mm-hmm. and the whole right, place smells of that saying. after yeah. party. Yep, mm-hmm. just reeks. Yeah. And so, stench. yeah, it's that nice, that nice beer stench. Everything's a little bit tacky. Mm-hmm. Well, it sucks um, we can go out to the bars this year because that does suck. So they, that just happened, right? I yeah. can't remember who brought it up, but someone brought up the point that like Halloween's a big party weekend, yeah. obviously, big time, and they just reduced the capacities. Do you think that they did that temporarily as well because of Halloween? Yes, one hundred percent. I think so. I feel like if it wasn't Halloween weekend, they would they would they would have just kind of left them as is. Mm-hmm. Because it happened, it happened on Thursday. Yeah. yeah, 
right? That's when everything went into effect. And we're talking about like Milwaukee went from, they're still 25% capacity, but you're only allowed to be seated. I yeah. Think. Seated service only. No dance floor is open. Um, and so at that point, I'd rather just have an intern and have the three of us hang out and drink. Yeah, for well, sure. Yeah, and that's why house parties are probably going to be huge this weekend. Mm-hmm. For Halloween we did. So we didn't get shut down. We didn't get the police called on us. Nope. Allegedly. Somehow. Um, but it was fun. I don't know. And I, we're still, I'm still up. I haven't gone to sleep. So. Yep. Yeah, no, you, you, you're looking <laughs> beautiful, too. <Thanks. laughs> this is uh, this is my um, Michael Jordan flu game, but <laughs> for the fucking podcast. Anything else? That's a, that is a reference, sir. Nope. Making the best out of this weekend is what we got. We had an yeah. awesome party. JJ, what was your costume? Uh, <laughs> I went as the oh colonel from KFC, and then my girlfriend went as a chicken. Like an actual no-shit chicken. It was... The most adorable couple's costume I think I've ever seen. I I'm was laughing kidding. so hard. We were, like, planning out, and uh, she was like, oh, yeah, like, I think I can, like, make a chicken sexy. And I was like, all right, like, you go for it, baby. And then she <laughs> comes out in a puffy sweater and a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, damn, you're like, girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you nailed that one. You got me good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't Lucky. wait to cluck you later. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know what the want 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 sound is. I don't have the sounds pulled up for that one. Maybe no, no. no well, not I, mean, that I think it's the, I think it's the light blue one next to it. Nope. nope. I mean that would have worked too. These all work. These all. Work. <laughs> that would have been good. Where the fuck is it? Ah, <laughs> it's always the last one. So right. wait, let me do it one more time. Um, can't wait to cluck you later. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Keep her moving. Um, yeah, no, that was so. We can get into that. What um, is? Do you think is your best Halloween costume ever? Ooh, best Halloween costume. Couples costumes. Do you, how do you feel about those? Um, I went as Obi Wan when I was like five. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking minty, nailed it, bro. Oh, yeah. Fucking nailed it, bud. Uh, yeah, I looked I straight up Jedi. It was awesome. Okay, what did you go as yesterday, just so the people I was know. a high school gym coach. That's why I have a mustache. Or a pedophile. That's what Hoppy yeah, said. Yeah, I mean, like, what's what's it's the difference, really? It's a horse piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horse piece. <laughs> Can we just, let's just talk about how weird it is that, like, I assume that our school was set up like most schools as far as the locker rooms, and the fact that, like, the teacher's office in the locker room just has bay windows overlooking all kit. That's a weird one. One of how did that get our passed? teachers? We're not going to get too much into this, but one of our gym teachers got in big trouble and fired because she was peeping. Right? There's some. <laughs> we have a live studio audience right now, um, and there's some head nods going. The but intern ye- confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> head <laughs> not confirmed. Yeah, confirmation from the intern. Um, I did not yeah, know that. But no. I mean, let's just like I just don't know how that got past people. That's not weird. Like, I mean, what? Well, when you, all right, yeah, nothing See, wrong with being gay, but the gym teacher was a lesbian. Doing gym teaching for high school girls and just in her. <laughs> I, you're just, the you're just trying. Going. He's <laughs> just trying to tiptoe <laughs> around the fact of the tip-toe. story. I'm trying to tiptoe around the fact that she was like basically flicking the bean in the office, just fucking. <laughs> I love that they just committed like to the, it too. Well, no, I mean, yeah, it's, Jesus, if I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to tiptoe around it. She was just. Smacking that thing, okay, You're like a fucking DJ, <laughs> like the beaver in the office, <laughs> <laughs> just rubbing it. Um, but yeah, so that does happen. Um, so that does happen. <laughs> I don't know if that's a common thing. I yes, hope it's not. Happens. I'm so sorry. Anybody that's still listening to this, where sh- I am not hungover, I have not slept. Um, he's been up for like over 24 hours straight, and I'm drinking. And he's been drinking a beautiful. Two women. Wow, how lager. appropriate. <laughs> Speaking of lesbians. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> hey, who's to say that they're lesbians? You never know. Um, it's 2020. So best, best, best costume ever. Give uh, me give me something. Best couples either costume. Either of you. Couples costume or just regular costume. I told how you, bro, you, Obi-Wan. Nailed it. I was a fucking Jedi. 
beef was Obi Wan. <laughs> I think like <laughs> the Sick. most all out I ever went was like a stormtrooper. Oh, that's badass. Dude. And I think I was like I don't know maybe like ten or eleven, but like the armor, the whole like nine yards. Nice. Oh, Remember when Halloween good. was actually like fun. Yeah. yeah. Remember, Remember when, when life everything was fun? I was gonna say, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. literally was everything was fun before we started drinking hey, and turn. like, can you control the cat? <laughs> <laughs> control your pussy, please. Um, no, my best Halloween costume. Honestly, I don't know. I really liked my one yesterday, which I don't think anybody else liked it. But I, I know my favorite of yours. Shoot. It has to be when you just went out in the bathrobe. Oh, <laughs> we yeah. Are, to paint this picture, yeah. <laughs> we partied in Madison. This yep. was like maybe three years ago, three or four. And yep. he shows up in just a bathrobe with a coffee mug and a newspaper. And, and then, slippers. And Oh, and slippers. Can't forget those. Fast forward to the bars. He had the bartender make his drink in the yep. mug. And we like look over on this dance floor going hard. <laughs> And he is sitting on a bar stool, <laughs> sipping his mixed drink, <laughs> paging through the funnies. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> got to stay in character. I don't know what you And, like, when girls asked me what I was, I was like, you can call me daddy. That's like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, dad. I'm your daddy. I'm your, I'm your daddy or a daddy or whatever you want to call me. But just call me daddy. This week. <laughs> 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 that was. That was probably. I mean, it was no effort, but it was pretty funny. It, it, just, it was I, so I thought funny. It was pretty funny. Um, NASDAQ's down. <laughs> okay, okay, Dad. <laughs> the four hundred one k is gonna take a hit this week, Sean. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. I'm glad you came up with that one because I was I was gonna say my one yesterday. That was um, you wore a beanie. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, we are moving on to the segments of this episode. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Beef, do you want to try to take it away? I don't yeah, know. sure. Do. <laughs> um, do, we even, I mean, is it, do we have a Google Doc? <laughs> no, 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 no. What the fuck's going on here? Uh, um, preparation? Oh, Never. yeah. Okay, so we do have we do have a Dear Lucky. It comes from us. Yeah, this <laughs> is like they always do. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is an us question for sure. <laughs> it comes from us. Uh, <laughs> this is good. This is good. So, Dear Lucky. Uh, what are your hangover rituals? Signed, Beef. <laughs> XOXO. Well, Beef, thanks for writing it this week. Um, uh, hangover rituals. Uh, you know what? We'll just JJ's get you lucky. Going, where the hell going. are you going, JJ? JJ's going. I don't know All where right. he's, he's... He's done. Should I stop? Should I stop recording? He's just like, fuck this. <laughs> oh my stomach hurts. Um, we didn't plan for this. What, what are we doing? Are your, the host? <laughs> oh, hey, welcome back. You? you know we're shooting, Beef. right? Jesus Christ! Beef. I stand up for thirty seconds and the world comes to an end. Oh well, yeah. Oh my God, I'm dying. In my stomach. Um, <laughs> producer Beef, can you give us a hangover ritual that you have? Well, like apparently. You? Fucking recording a podcast is now a hangover ritual. <laughs> That's waking your up, fault for being hungover. Keep waking drinking. Up, waking up Keep to drink. a phone call from Lucky at like 9.30 in the morning after drinking <laughs> until like 3 a.m. Hey, man, we got to shoot a podcast. Oh, great. I can't breathe. My I also, oh, I love that you made him answer oh, his own question. Oh, <laughs> That's the classic mom line. Oh, I don't know what you God. think. Oh, what do you do? <laughs> I hate you both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't talk. Someone else has to talk. Please. JJ, what are your hangover rituals besides <laughs> recording podcasts? Uh, um. Well, the golden know. rule is you can't be can't be hungover if you're never oh. sober. So we got that. So yeah. So keep drinking. That's, That's definitely got to be on there. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. got to be a good one. Okay. Um, I I like to lay in bed and cry. No, I'm, I'm talking about hangovers. Oh, oh <laughs> shit. Okay, sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> I'm talking about hangovers. Yeah. yeah I, I, not what you do every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, no, I like to just like, yeah, lay in bed, pretend the world doesn't exist for a while. Okay. Don't, my hangovers get bad though. I'm only 25 and like, I'll be hungover till like, I don't know, three, four in the afternoon now. See, I just need some greasy food and some coffee and I'm mm. fucking golden. What's you your go-to hangover food? 
sound greasy. I don't know. Fuck Fucking. you. Give me an answer. Like, what would you order off Postmates? I would fuck up some McDonald's breakfast. Yes. Yeah. McDonald's breakfast, I think, is the go-to for hangovers. Like a fucking egg McMuffin. Um, I do a sausage McMuffin with egg. Sometimes up. I just like to go to, like, like my Fishers over there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or Webb's and just get, like, a greasy egg and meat skillet. Oh. Yeah. My girlfriend found out about Ma Fisher's I know what last I'm doing weekend right after and got we so upset that, that we've never gone there before. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, crazy. there's a reason. That's your fault. That's well, totally your fault. We got to get fucking drunk here more. Or yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we have more hungover mornings. Yeah, well, you, it's gonna happen now. I can't so. wait. Thank God it's only ten thirty right now. Um, we've got plenty of day left. So my, I think this is why. Is it leaving? Is it leaving a friend at your apartment unattended? <laughs> is that a, is that a hungover ritual for you? Shout out Jamie one. I I <laughs> love, love that you. your last name him too. <laughs> I, I don't fuck yeah, I don't care. Um, Jamie, I, I'm so sorry if you're listening to this and you wake up in my apartment and are just you don't know where you are. That's because a first. that's not <laughs> lucky bringing home a dude. <laughs> a first. I mean, come on, come on, there, guy. <laughs> Don't just and then leaving them in the, in the apartment. All alone. right, so someone answer this. Do you guys get the hangover hornies? Yes, a hundred percent. Five percent. That is my hangover ritual. I just have to come also as much as right. possible. We okay. need that on a T-shirt. <laughs> just the hang- hangover <laughs> hornies. Because that is the greatest name. Literally. I was about to say, Lucky, choose your words wisely. <laughs> you're about to tell hundreds of people that you profusely masturbate when you're hungover. Not, <laughs> as the criminal would said, say, we're choking I the never chicken. never said... Nice. No, that's not it. <laughs> no, that, was <laughs> that was great. Great. That was great. Where the fuck is it? That was fucking great. I hate this um, song. No. no, you what are. This? What do you I mean to do? We have Where's that like if you back up. So okay, okay, okay. Keep talking about hangover horny. So you guys do what get the that. Are, these are your. That's your answer. You no, but you it. said you both said you do get that. What do you want me to talk about? Uh, how, how's, <laughs> how it's like an extra level of depressing over how it usually is. Yeah, yeah right. Um, you I feel myself even more. The best <laughs> guilty. But you yeah. feel it like four times with like before noon. <laughs> <laughs> like you know you need to rehydrate, but you're definitely not going to. But you need to rehydrate twice as fast and twice as much because you're, you're also just losing so much fluid. You're losing know. a lot of fluid. <laughs> You're basically just bleeding out in your bed for yeah. all of the AM. Bleeding out through your penis. Um, you have that old sock that just stands up straight. <laughs> Jesus right. Christ. I use a dish towel. I don't use a sock. Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, wow, someone likes some texture, okay? Yeah, my God. I remind okay. myself to never do dishes. Oh, my God. That's why he never does dishes. Yeah, that's why he eats off fucking yeah. paper plates. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when, when Lucky moved into his apartment, he had only, like, disposable, like, Dishes and cutlery for like three months. Yeah. yeah. When, when I try to use my dish towels, it's like using one of those, uh, what's the um, oh, copper, the <laughs> copper <laughs> scrub things. Oh my God. <laughs> you could beat someone over the head with this fucking dish towel. <laughs> That's how hard oh it my is. God. Just rub it on someone's face and they start bleeding. What, uh, we gotta check up on Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> what you do to our friend? Yeah, Jamie's face bleeding. Why is there a dish towel? Why am I covered in dish towels? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh my God. My, my hangover ritual. Order very greasy food. Yeah. <coughs> Don't care how it happens. It's not going to happen from sex. Like, you have to masturbate. Okay. Three or four times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the severity of the hangover, is there, like, is there, a, uh, is there a chart I can follow of, like, the number of times uh, I have to versus... Yeah, you could probably do it based on, like, how many beers that you had the night prior, and then it's, like, a rising scale okay. based on how many Is there a direct correlation achieve. between how hungover you are and how <laughs> yeah, many times Yeah, is it, like, do I, like, do I take my total number of drinks and, like, divide by three? <laughs> It just that feels like a good number. I don't know. Yeah, but then you have to. That's yeah, still sure. probably that's still a lot. That's why I don't count drinks. Do no, you guys I was count drinks? Say, if you no. divide it by three, uh, last night we had, I probably had twenty drinks. Divide that by three. That's 
seven almost. Wow, you're in for a rough morning when you finally decide to <laughs> go to bed and wake up. <laughs> yeah. Just be shooting out like smoke. It's not going to be. It's going to be coughing. <laughs> Your dick's going to have to run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, We're shooting blanks. Shout out Henry and Arden. Arden, Arden right now. Um, if you guys are listening, stop. I love you. Please stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't, he shouldn't be surprised when you ask to suck his dick like mid interview to get on the reggae playlist. Yeah, <laughs> that was the I greatest didn't moment. Ask I've... to suck his dick. I said, whose dick do I have to oh, suck? Very different. Okay, sorry, Whom's, Henry. He wasn't. He wasn't. Whom's dick? Well, it turned out to be Henry's because because <laughs> it's his playlist. It's his so. playlist so. he didn't take me up on it. So I'm like, just gonna say. Know. I'm just gonna say. I mean, well, you didn't take him home yet. <laughs> <laughs> Take it back. Are you, Jamie, are, you on, are you on Jamie's uh, Jamie, playlist? I am so <laughs> sorry if you're listening to this. We're gonna we're gonna go over to to like his apartment next time, and it's it's all gonna be like Griffin and Ilium and shit, and it's gonna be dub stepping. Like, yeah. would be like, is this Jamie's playlist? <laughs> so Jamie, I am so sorry. I don't know what else is there. There's probably no more questions. I would imagine. I'm sure we can just end there. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we give the people some mercy and call it? Yeah. We could. Um that sign was, off then okay. JJ. All right. Uh, I don't know if I have really anything to say. I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm so foggy right now. Um Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got nice. for you. All right, beef. Um Thanks for watching. <laughs> Henry, Appreciate you guys. Henry, Jamie. I'm so sorry. Ayrton, we apologize. <laughs> yeah. Ayrton. We apologize. He was the nicest guy ever. Yeah, He's going to listen nice. to the. He asked for a link to this podcast. Yeah. When it comes I, out. Mentally, I was just like, oh, please don't listen to it. Should we just not do that? We should just do the interview. Just send the interview to him. <laughs> Um, I don't know what happened to the rest of the podcast, Ayrton. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I um, not sending. That's weird. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm sorry things got off the rails. I, I'm i not hungover. I'm not hungover. This is not a hung up, hungover episode of Feeling Lucky for Lucky, I guess, if you want to speak in the third person. Um, I'm Getting just weird. really he's, he's drunk. He's gone the third person. I'm yeah. really drunk. Um responsibly I'm responsibly like really drunk <laughs> <laughs> um thank you to Hops News thank you to the Hops News family um thank you Henry from Mobcraft and Ayrton from MKE Black it was an awesome episode I'm sorry that we ruined it with this fucking whatever we're doing we gotta hide our dish towels <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that should be my sign off. Everyone, I'm hide your kids, go. hide your wives, hide your dish towels. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's where we have to end it. Thank you guys so much. Really fun episode, episode 13. This has been a Hops News production. You can find Hops News on all your favorite podcasts and social media platforms at Hops News. Cheers.